after you slog through all of the licensing, Xactimate training, networking, carrier certification classes and exams, and your first couple of storms, which will be harder than you think, what happens after that? What does it look like on the other side of all the chaos, dead ends, false starts, expensive gear, and even more expensive training that has no guarantee of getting you anywhere? All of the headaches you encounter getting started are just a boot camp for what's to come. It's trial by fire. Because if you can navigate your way through all this getting started stuff, if you can pick yourself up and dust yourself off when you get knocked down on your rear, and you will get knocked on your rear, if you can set your jaw and grit your teeth and really put your shoulder into this and just not take no for an answer, then you'll be the kind of person who will do very well as an independent adjuster. I've been a field adjuster for 20 years. 19 of those years, it was as an IA and one as a staff adjuster working in the field. I didn't start out as a staffer like so many folks do, but instead in late 2016, my wife and I decided to plant ourselves in one place so that we could have better access to our fertility doctor. But after some frustration getting pregnant, we moved on and I left my staff position after a year. Very soon after that, I founded Adjuster TV. And Adjuster TV was something that I had been thinking about and dreaming about for a very long time. It's just one of those things. Nothing will happen until you take some action, right? So I've been not taking no for an answer with Adjuster TV for going on two years now. And you know where that no comes from? It comes from me in the form of procrastination, not believing that Adjuster TV will help anybody or that anybody will even watch, not believing that I can truly add value to our industry and wondering if all the long hours and late nights will ever add up to anything. Ironically, it's my career as a cat property adjuster that has actually made Adjuster TV possible. I would never have had the downtime between cat deployments that I really needed to get the foundation for Adjuster TV built. And you know, video is a passion of mine. I love the gear, the storytelling, the technical side of it, and the people side of it, just like claims. So for me, one of the greatest things about being a cat IA is that I can explore my personal passions in depth and with extra money if I need it on the side. In the off season, I can travel and shoot video and hone my craft so that I can actually make money with it on the side if I want to. And I can live wherever in the country I want. It wasn't always like this though. When I got started, I made some pretty serious mistakes that held me back from getting on first call list for years longer than it should have. And number one, in the beginning, I just didn't network. 
This alone would have made a massive difference in the number of deployments I received early in my career. I didn't go to my first adjuster conference until 2012. I didn't do a ride along with any adjusters when I got started, which would have been invaluable for me to see how a good adjuster gets things done and to make friends with more experienced adjusters who could give me the inside track on deployments and other opportunities, which is really the heart of networking. So for Adjuster TV and as an independent adjuster, I'm attending at least one good conference a year going forward. Number two, I didn't get deeper training in damage identification and construction. The quality of my early files wasn't the best. I was getting dinged for missing damage, for paying for stuff that wasn't damaged, and for writing incomplete estimates because I just didn't know what drip edge was or if drywall texture can be spot repaired or not. Number three, I didn't get more licenses. Yes, I complain about working in New York, but every IA firm I've spoken to calls New York the golden ticket license. And why? Is it because New York deployments are better? Not necessarily. The reason they call it that is because if you apply to their roster and you have a New York license on your resume, they will fast track you to the front of the line of people applying to be on their roster. Of all the things you can do to demonstrate to an IA firm that you're serious about being an IA, nothing shows this better than going through the cumbersome and time-consuming process of getting a New York license. It's that important. As a 20-year veteran, I don't have a New York license because I prefer to not work in New York. But an adjuster with my level of experience can walk onto pretty much any roster they want to. However, when I was getting started, if I had known that the New York license would be so valuable to IA firms, I would have definitely gotten the New York license and would have dropped everything to run up there and work doing whatever they asked me to for as long as they needed me to. Number four, I didn't get advanced Xactimate training. And let me just humble brag for a second. I'm fast in Xactimate, but it took me years to get that way. And it was all trial and error and sudden aha moments when I figured out a hack, a workaround, or a new keyboard shortcut. Message to Xactware, if you really loved me, you'd bring back all of the keyboard shortcuts from 25 and 27.5, all of them. Being fast in Xactimate is more than just using macros and being fast in Sketch. You must learn the quirks of the software if you wanna be able to close claims quickly. And finally, number five, early on, I would have sought out daily assignments in the downtime instead of going to the beach for months on end. Preserving that CAD income with quality off-season work that I could start and stop easily, even from the start, would have set me up for an early retirement. In addition to that, building relationships with other daily IA firms would have provided me with greater deployment opportunities as well, which of course brings us back to networking. The rewards of this career are great. It's not for everybody though. It's risky, yes, but it's far riskier for people who don't have the courage and perseverance to keep pushing through when big challenges get in their way. It's not for the faint of heart. But if you've got some grit and you're not afraid to take a leap into a risky, but very much worth it world where you get to decide how you wanna work, then becoming an independent adjuster is for you. Question of the day, what do you think? If you're ready to learn how to benefit from my years of experience, head on over to adjustertv.com. And if you got value from this video, you can help me create more videos just like this by subscribing to Adjuster TV on YouTube. Wondering what to watch next? There are tons more videos right here on the Adjuster TV YouTube channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.